Video 2 of Chapter 3. We are continuing on in our discussion of scatter plots, but specifically we are going to talk about in this video of how to describe scatter plots. Now, back in Chapter 1, when we were asked to describe the distribution of just one quantitative variable, we used the acronym SOX to be able to describe the variable shape, outliers, if there were any, uh, center, and spread. But now that we have two quantitative variables in our scatter plots, we can't really talk about the socks of each because we're graphing them together in one graph. So now we get a new acronym, which I refer to as just DFS. And the D of DFS stands for direction. And so what do I mean by direction? Well, direction is pretty much going to be one of two things. We're either going to see a positive direction or we're going to see a negative direction as things move to the right. And you can also associate this with like slope of a line. Okay, and that's what we'll really get into later is uh, the line of best fit that fits this data uh, the best that it can. So positive, you notice a lot of these points are kind of moving up and to the right. And if you were to apply a straight line, that would kind of fit roughly in the middle of all this, we notice this line would have positive slope. Likewise, down below, if your points are moving more down and to the right as your x increases, then this would have more of a negative sloped line. Now, there will be some cases where you're not going to see a clear positive or a negative direction. And so, if you just see kind of a random scattering of points, and you kind of look at this and you go, man, I don't really see a positive direction. I don't see points moving up and to the right or really down and to the right in general. So you could just call this no direction. And then there's a special case, and this is where we'll get into some um, unique data, we'll say, because I can't give away the next um, letter of DFS too soon. But in this case, notice that part of our data is negative, but then another part of it's got positive direction. So you could say that there's really no clear direction. Uh, you could also state that for, you know, up to a certain point, there is a negative direction. And from another point onward, there's another direction. So you could kind of say there's both negative and positive uh, for kind of like a piecewise function, if you will, right? If you kind of split this up and said negative direction for when X is between here and here, and there's a positive direction when X is between here and there. Okay, so you're not going to see this happen too terribly much. So it's pretty much going to be either positive or negative will be the two directions you'll see. The F of DFS stands for form. And there's really just going to be two main forms we're going to see. Linear, and if it looks like you could pretty much fit a straight line you know, roughly in the middle of all your points, that all of these points look like they're following in a linear kind of direction. Uh, this one down here might look more something like this. This one here may be more like this. So if it looks like the points are kind of following all in the same general pattern and direction, then the form is linear. Now, if it's not linear, we're really just going to call that non-linear. Uh, clearly, the one thing that you will see of non-linear is if it has that kind of curved pattern to it. Okay, whether it's curved this way or curved in this direction, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you see something like that, it's clearly not linear. Now, if you see that special case of direction where there was no clear direction, you can't really apply a singular straight line uh, anywhere in this scatter plot to say that it would be really linear. So if you see this random scattering of points, uh, I would just call that not linear because it doesn't really fit one of these kind of nice looking patterns, okay? So if it looks like it's linear, call it linear. If it doesn't look linear, then your other real choice is just saying non-linear. And then S is going to stand for strength. The strength is going to be the part that's going to take a little while to get used to. And once we've go gone through uh, enough examples, you'll start to get a better feeling for strength. Now, I define strength as the closer the points are in your scatter plot, the closer the points are to making a line or even a curved line, if it's a nonlinear scatter plot, 
uh, the stronger the strength is. So in this scenario, notice all these points, they're, they're not lining up perfectly to make a straight line, but it's pretty close. So since these are really, really close to making a straight line, we would call that strength strong. But this is a strong linear scatter plot, and it would be in a negative direction if we wanted to throw direction in. Uh, down here, this would still technically be a strong strength, but it's a nonlinear strong. Now, if I said, how would you define the strength if we called this linear, then you would call the opposite of strong, which would be weak. This would be weak linear. Now, here's an example of the varying levels of what I would call strong. Now, this I would call, and you get to use uh, adverbs that describe how strong things are, I would call the strength of this absolutely extremely strong. Now, what is the absolute perfect kind of strong strength? And that's if the points literally line up to make a straight line. That's perfect strength. Uh, but since there's a little bit of wavering in here, I would still call this extremely strong. Now, as the points start to waver about, and if you think of this more of a thicker line instead of a thinner line, I would still call this, though, very strong. And this is wavering about a little bit more so. So I would still call this, I don't know, maybe fairly strong. So notice that my adverbs keep getting lesser. Like I started off with extremely and then very, but I wouldn't call very as much uh, if there was a uh, scale of intensity of adverbs, I guess you would say here. I don't think it was very as extreme as extreme. Uh, and fairly, I feel like, is a step down from very. And then if I look at this scatter plot, um, it's still strong, but it's really starting to lose some strength here. So maybe I would call this uh, somewhat strong. And it's really these adverbs. These aren't really like set in stone. Okay, so if you looked at this scatter plot and you said, this is very strong, and I said extremely strong, I still get the idea that you're saying that there is a higher intensity of strongness here uh, than, say, these two down here. So this is what I'm saying. It takes a little while to get used to. Like, what kind of adverb are you going to use to describe the strength or how strong a scatter plot is? So I'm just trying to give you a rough idea. I would use extremely, very, fairly, somewhat. Um, and really, you could have just called, let's say, this one down here, bottom left, even if you just called it strong. Hey, I'd, I'd be okay with that. I, yes, this is strong. If you didn't specify an adverb for how strong it was, it's really not the end of the world. But you do need to understand that there are varying levels of strong. Now, the more the points are scattered about in all directions, up, down, left, and right, the weaker the strength. So if you saw a scatter plot that looked like this, um, this really doesn't look like it's making a straight line, kind of in any direction. So if I were to classify the strength of this scatter plot, I would call it weak. The more that your points look like they're almost making a circle, if you will, um, is where it's really going to be the ultimate weakest strength of all. Now, the kind of the dividing line between strong and weak is just about at this point here. To me, this almost kind of looks like a football. Okay, And if you see something that looks like a football, once it starts to get a little bit more rounder than the football is where I would probably start using the term weak to describe the strength. Uh, but if it's right at that football shape, that's where I would still kind of call it somewhat strong, but it's just about getting to be weak. Now, some other considerations is sometimes you might have outliers in your scatter plot. Like you might look at a scatter plot and say, well, you know what, in general, here's most of my points here, and this is following in a negative direction. And I would say the strength is pretty strong with these points. But once you throw this point into the mix, would you still call the strength strong? Would you call it as strong if that point was there versus wasn't there? And so with this outlier, it, it almost kind of takes the strength down just a little bit. Okay? So if I call this very strong, then if I had to include the outlier point, I would still call this strong, maybe fairly strong. You know, just kind of knock it down a notch. But if this point wasn't here, again, 
I'd call that very strong, maybe even extremely strong. Other things you might see are gaps in your data, and you're probably not going to see this a whole lot, but sometimes it might happen where you've got a set of data that's all kind of closely together, and then you've got another set of data that, for whatever reason, is kind of separated. So if you notice gaps, you might comment on uh, those gaps in your DFS. Okay. Now, are we going to do any kind of mathematical rule for outliers and scatter plots? No. You might just comment on most of the points had a general negative direction that looked fairly linear uh, and had a strong strength, but there was one point that appeared to be an outlier in our data set. So what I want you guys to do to end video two is to describe each scatter plot. And I've got four options here for you. And I want you to describe all four of these. And again, how do you describe a scatter plot? You need to use your DFS. So tell me the DFS of all four of these scatter plots, and we'll talk about those the next day in class. That's all for video two.